Rebound, rebound. Nice work, you guys. Here we go. Keep at it. Here we go. Work, work, work. Get in the paint. It's a fight. fans and welcome to GCU Arena for this basketball showcase between the UT RGV Vaqueros and your Grand Canyon University Lopes. Both squads come in 11 and 11 on the season. Lopes are five and three in the WAC and UT RGV is one and six in the WAC. Let's send it down to the PA announcer for the Prayer National Anthem and your starting lineups. Let's meet the players and coaches competing in tonight's game. First for the Vaqueros from Rio Grande Valley. Here's your starting lineup. A 5'8 guard, number five, Jamika Dowell. A 5'11 guard, number 11, Quinn Huggins. A 5'10 guard, number 15, Nichelle Hyman. A 6' forward, number 21, Chrissy Sampson. A 5'10 forward, number 34, Megan Johnson. And coach for the Vaqueros is Larry Tidwell.
starting lineups. I'm JP Saar alongside Adriana Esparza. Lopes versus the Vaqueros. Here we go. GCU is bouncing off a tough overtime loss against UMKC, but UTRGV is also bouncing off a tough overtime loss against New Mexico State. Two very even teams. Their WAC records are a little skewed. UTRGV won and six in the whack, but all six of their losses are all within nine points. Two of those going to overtime, so don't be swayed differently and be thinking about UTRGV differently because of their record. They are a very tough team. Lopes win the tip, wearing their all-black uniforms. UTRGV in the all-orange. Camille Haley starting alongside August Tashar, Jessica Gajewski, Vanessa Murphy, and Bree Mobley. Small lineup for the Vaqueros. So the Lopes are matching them with a small lineup of their own. Haley looking for the drive, a little hook shot. Wanted the foul, does not get it. Rebounded by Dowell. She was just a little short on that. If she put a little more oomph in it, she could have got it. Would have made it just short. Defended well by the Vaqueros down low. Ball over on the right wing with Dowell. Looking for the screen. Huggins up to Hyman. Hyman bounces off the screen. Trying to find Sampson. Over to Johnson. Great move by Johnson, but a shot clock violation. Great defense by the Lopes, forcing them to just cycle the ball around. And when they finally got into the paint, it was a little too late. I like it. We're bringing the pressure on early. Little four. Full court press for UTRGV. Kajewski over to Haley. A lot of ball movement now. Mobley wanted the ball down low. Haley decides to go up with it. Bree Mobley off a screen, little jumper, just off the front iron. Now definitely an interesting dynamic. This Vaquero offense does have their leading score, their two leading scores come off the bench. Excuse me. Quinn Huggins is starting today, but their leading scorer, Laura Van Tilburg, coming off the bench normally. Bree Mowey with a steal all alone for a layup, and she puts the Lopes on the board early. There's no surprise right there. Start off strong, end off strong. You can always count on Bree Mowey. Bree Mowey with a solid steal. Predicted that pass right out like a book. Hyman, a little shot. No good. Vanessa Murphy grabs the rebound. Tashard draws a foul. Dowell was trying to surprise August there, but reached in, got a little too physical. Yeah, if she didn't reach, she could have had it. Jessica Gajewski cross court pass to Camille Haley. Off ball screens for the Lopes. To Shards in the corner. She's all alone for three. Yep, you betcha. Five nothing Lopes. All net right there. Hyman bringing the ball down. Over to Huggins. Great back cut. Hard foul and a charge against Johnson. That was a great back cut by Megan Johnson. She came in a little too hard and a great charge. Drawn by Vanessa Murphy. Full court press early on for the Vaqueros. Vanessa Murphy gets it down low. Great job by Camille Haley breaking that press, finding Murphy early. That's one thing about the press is you got to get back quickly once you're beat. Yeah, you got to stay on your defender because any little space you give them, they'll take it. Bree Mobley, staying on Hyman, and a great defensive play by Mobley. She'll get credited with a block there. Just stuffed that one out of bounds. And here she comes, Laura Van Tilburg, checking in for Sampson. Laura Van Tilburg, 6'3", going to be one of the taller players on the court. Matches up with Vanessa Murphy. And Tashard comes soaring in for a steal. She'll get the ball back at the top, right around the logo. Being defended tight by Dowell. Tashard gets in the paint. Back out to Mobley. Mobley pointing around, getting the offense moving. 10 on the shot clock. Murphy coming for the screen. Over to Gajewski. Gajewski for three. 
Just off the back, Murphy chasing after it. And a great job by a couple of Vaquero defenders boxing her out, not letting her get to that. Yeah, Dow's doing an excellent job on, on defense. She knows she has to pressure up more just because of Bree Mobley. Jamika Dowell giving no space to any of the lopes she is guarding. Very solid defender. But it's been Nichelle Hyman handling the ball for the Vaqueros on the offensive side. Megan Johnson, down low to Van Tilburg, and a great hook shot just doesn't find. And Augusta Shahar diving saves it in. Lopes leads 7 0, just around the six minute mark of this first quarter. Both playing solid defense, working on their offense. Tashard had some space, was looking for it, and she'll find Gajewski. Yep, don't expect Jessica Gajewski to miss two threes in a row. She puts that one in, gets the Lopes to double digits. Michelle Hyman working on Mobley. Over to Megan Johnson. Huggins with a screen. And Jamika Dowell, great drive, had a layup. Got contacted on the head after it. So she will get two shots. And hoping to put the Vaqueros on the board for the first time. It's kind of a sports extravaganza going on right now for the Lopes. We got softball opening up their first game in their new stadium. Can't forget about volleyball, playing men's Pepperdine. Men's volleyball playing Pepperdine. Winning in the third set right now. And men's basketball on the road playing UTRGV. This one over to Bree Mobley. Bree Mobley for three. Boom! Bree Mobley finds the bottom of the bucket. Oh, what is that, three, uh, three threes in a row from our team? Three threes in a row for the Lopes is right. Kajewski with two of them, Mobley with one. Lopes lead 13 to two after Dowell knocked down two free throws. Van Tilburg, top of the paint, and Huggins will have an easy layup. That's so dangerous when your tallest player comes out and is able to run the offense at the top. It just completely spreads the floor. They were able to crack the paint inside and get an easy left-handed layup. Nice shot by Vanessa Murphy. Just rised over the defender. Is able to put that one in. Yeah, nice uh, setback, drop set. And a block by Jessica Gajewski. Gajewski said, Quinn Huggins, you are not allowed to shoot down here. What a play. Bree Mobley coming back, oh. swinging it. Vanessa Murphy almost a step back three. August the Shards got the ball, running the point. Off a screen for Murphy. Murphy was open down low. Solid defenders on her. Now it gets down to her seven on the shot clock. Another little hook up and over Van. Tilburg and she's able to get it in. Great move by Vanessa Murphy using her body. Solid fundamentals down there. Great post work. Murphy with six points on the board now. And another turnover for the Vaqueros. Camille Haley's got Bree Mobley to her side to shard in the corner, but she's gonna, just going to drop it back to Gajewski. That looked like the ball was handed right to her. Yep, and to shard. We'll coordinate the offense over to Camille Haley. The Carols look like they're about to sub in uh, four, four players. Bringing in four new fresh feet. Haley over to Gajewski. This one off the back. 17-4, Lopes comfortable lead early. This one over to Megan Johnson. Great move by Megan Johnson. Camille Haley slips and falls. She fires a shot over Vanessa Murphy. And it misses, Murphy gets the rebound. Lopes bringing it back up quick. Bree Mobley, great motion offense by the Lopes. They're able to find open shooters. And Murphy's leading in rebounds right now. Camille Haley, great shot right off the screen. Just flicks that one up there. Beautiful point and puts all five Lopes starters on the board here. Wow, when does that ever happen? and another turnover for UTRGV, so we will be right back after this short timeout. I'm Sarah, I'm a senior at GCU studying hospitality management. 
Since the program started, it's already grown so much. There's so many opportunities for students to be able to learn outside of the classroom. We have the golf course, we have the hotel, the restaurant. My professors are industry professionals. It makes me feel comfortable knowing that I'm being trained in relevant information. When you graduate from GCU with a hospitality degree, people know that you're prepared. I think it makes you better equipped to handle any situation. It makes you more valuable, especially here in Phoenix, and there's so many opportunities. The best part about being a GCU student is just the fact that I'm in a community where everyone supports me and everyone wants to see me succeed. One of the things I love about GCU is just the importance they place on servant leadership. I serve in the children's ministry, teaching Sunday school. It's incredibly rewarding. Welcome back here inside GCU Arena. Fans are having a good time. Lopes lead very comfortably early, 19 to four. Adriana, two star players for the Lopes performing very well. Yeah, we all have points on the board. Uh, what I do like about UTRGV is if you look at their stats, they are a team. It's not just a one man team, you know, not one person scoring all the points. So we do have to watch out for that, but it looks like we're bringing it as well. So. Yeah, Vanessa Murphy, six points. Bree Mobley, five. Lopes on the board with a couple three pointers here early on. They lead by 15, very comfortable lead early, but UTRGV isn't. They can come from behind, so Lopes need to keep yeah. the pressure up. And that's the thing, we just have to stay consistent. Like always, start off strong, end off strong. Lopes shooting 67% from the field. UTRGV only 17%, so struggling shooting UTRGV is gonna need to cycle the ball around, get some higher quality shots and limit the turnovers. Six turnovers early on for them, just eight minutes into this first quarter. Definitely something they need to limit, and the Lopes can keep that pressure high, maybe extend their lead before the end of this first quarter. Yeah, I feel like we're not missing. It's crazy. Yep, 67%, <laughs> extremely high. Lopes need to just keep working the ball, keep these high percentage shots going. It seems like they haven't taken a contested shot yet. Augusta Shard bringing the ball up. Over Mobley. Mobley's so aggressive. Whenever she gets the ball, just immediately looks up to the basket. Yeah, she Kamita does. Kula checking in for the Lopes. Van Tilburg does a great job flashing up. They get the ball down to Murphy. Kajewski, a little runner. So strong with those. She cannot finish that one. Amara Graham coming in for the Vaqueros. As well as Valeria Tapia. Nice Ram long pass. Over to Tapia. And a little reach and foul against Bree Mobley. Ideal Turk. As well as Alicia McCray checking in for the Vaqueros. Nice little hook shot by Van Tilburg there. She is not on the board just yet. Vanessa Murphy doing a great job limiting the Vaqueros' leading score. Yeah, her down low presence is definitely needed tonight. Minute and a half remaining in this first quarter. Bree Mobley off the Vanessa Murphy screen. Down low. She's got Kajewski up top. She goes out to her. Wasn't a fast enough pass. Didn't give her enough time to fire up a three. Bree Mobley, easy drive to the lane. Thought she might have got fouled. Lost possession of the ball going up. She was unable to finish that layup. No points for the Vaqueros in the last three and a half minutes. Tapia was trying to fix that one. And she won't, Lopes are pushing it up the court. They have a four on three if they hurry. Bree Mobley waits and lets Tashard get back down the court. Murphy coming up to set a screen. Van Tilburg, and they get it down low to Murphy and a great finish. That's what happens, Van Tilburg flashes up on that screen, almost out to the three point line and Murphy does a great job on the pick and roll. Yeah, we gotta do a, what I gotta keep doing the uh, feeding her down low. That's definitely how we're gonna eat up a lot of points. Graham, over to Tapia. This three is short. And stay in here, foul against Bree Mobley, number 23 on 23 crime. Alicia McCray, the six foot center out of West Palm Beach. And now Camille Haley checking back in, gonna give Bree Mobley a little break. What I do like about Camille Haley, even though she's a freshman, you can still tell that she's a natural leader. 
That is two for McCray for the Vaqueros. Tashard will get the inbound pass, bring it up. As she loves to do, gets to the logo. It's playing for one shot, just 10 seconds left. Tashard handling the ball. Akula moving off the screen over to Gajewski. Gajewski fires with seven, just short. Vaqueros going to try to push. Tapia, half court shot. She puts it up and just short. That would have been a little bonus for UTRGV if they could get that one to go. 21 to 6, the score at the end of the first. We will be right back on GCU TV. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back here inside GCU Arena. Sports extravaganza is going on here tonight on GCU's campus. Softball game starting, opening the stadium. How exciting is that to just play in a brand new oh, stadium? Yeah. I got to go see it earlier, and it is so nice. I promise you, you'll definitely want to catch a game there. They had the field completed last year, but part two of their softball expansion was building the whole stadium, just like they're doing with the baseball, and it looks amazing. You're gonna wanna come out to catch a game. Also, men's volleyball playing in a tough game tonight. Number 10 versus number 11, Pepperdine. That's gotta be exciting just to have a huge national scale volleyball tournament playing on GCU's campus. Oh, definitely, and then baseball's coming up eight more days. Eight more days for baseball. Lopes won the third set in volleyball, going into the fourth down two to one and we got of course we have women's volleyball here handling business against utrgv with a forcing another turnover that's the eighth of the game augusta shard over to akula sharon miller checking in for the lopes giving vanessa murphy a little bit of a break sharon miller coming up for the screen haley doesn't use it goes to the opposite side she throws it up and gets fouled. Two shots coming her way. Kaylee knocks down the first, gets the Lopes on the board first here. In this second quarter. She usually shoots at a 61%, so. Shooting 100% from the line so far in this game. Exactly. 23 to six, the score. Tapia bringing the ball back down. And those free throws are the points you're not gonna wanna miss. And a deep three. She took her time Sent on that, that shot. Rebounded by Sharon Miller, and Van Tilburg is down, holding her knee on the far baseline. Not a good sign for the Vaqueros. Akula over for three. This one misses far. Gajewski almost got the rebound. Now a referee timeout. Going to attend to the injured player. She's able to get up on her own power, but is limping. Not a good sign for the Vaqueros. At least she is walking, though. So Putting some weight on it, That's getting her way back to the sign. bench. Hopefully it's not too serious and we can see her later on. Like I said, leading score for the Vaqueros, 9.5 points a game. Good support by the fans out here. Fans give her a little stand, not a standing a ovation, applause. but a little clapping ovation. This one kicked out, three sent up by Turk. This one misses. Man, UTRGB can't buy a bucket. Akula chasing after that one. They really were fighting for that ball. This one given to UTRGV. In 
Inbounded to Graham. And August Deschard fighting in with a steal. Landed right on August Deschard's arm. I saw that from here. Didn't look comfortable. Deschard seems okay. Walking it off, not asking to come out. Looks like her shoulder almost. She was landed on top of when she was reaching for the ball. They called a foul against UTRGV, so Lopes will keep the ball into Shard, trying to come right back at, at Graham. Say, you're gonna foul me, I'm gonna come right back at you. Haley almost loses possession, she will. Tapia got away in, we're going for the little floater, and she will bank it off the glass. So Shard's pushing. Nice little easy layup for her. Over to Gajewski. Lopes aren't getting the Sharon. ball movement, aren't finding the open shots like they were in the first quarter. Sharon Miller fires that one up, misses. And a foul coming down, foul on Camille Haley trying to track down that rebound. First team foul of the second quarter for the Lopes. Now Sharon is wide open down low. Murphy coming in for Haley, as well as Myra Williams. And for Sharon Miller. A couple solid minutes for Miller at the beginning of this second quarter. Yeah, she did pretty good last game, too. Graham over to Turk. And a foul inbound coming on the baseline. Off the ball foul. I think got a little too physical trying to fight through that screen. Lopes pick up their second team foul. This one inbound to Graham. And Guy with a nice little roll in there, underhanded, off the fingertips. Gets UTRGV into double figures. Tashard, such a good ball handler for the Lopes. Trying to get it down to Vanessa Murphy. Myra Williams got it from Deshard quickly off the screen. Vanessa Murphy was double covered. I don't know if Myra Williams saw that before she threw the pass in there. No, McCray was very excited about that block. And a great play by the Lopes. Little pick and roll action off the ball. And the inbounder Myra yeah. Williams able to find Vanessa Murphy and she'll draw the foul. Murphy's usually good at free throws too. Shooting 73%. Uh, hey, UTRGV Maybe I fans <laughs> screams at the top of her lungs to avoid that one. Yeah. Vanessa oh. Murphy makes the second half of those free throws. Tapia, over to Turk, got a couple very mobile guards for the Vaqueros are in right now, and Gai with another nice bucket. Excuse me, that one is McCray. Alicia McCray with a beautiful little floater. So the two centers are getting it done for the Vaqueros early in this second quarter. And Gajewski answers right back with a floater of her own. Lopes doing a great job getting high percentage shots, and we're going to see five fresh subs for the Vaqueros coming in. We will see them come in right now after that charging foul against UTRGV. They do sub in a lot, which is good, because then, you know, you always have fresh Very feet. balanced scoring for UTRGV. This looks like their starting lineup again. They have eight players that average five points or more. Kavita Kula hands it off to August Deschard. High pressure for these fresh subs that just checked in. Janika Dowell playing very good defense on August Deschard, not giving her any space to breathe. And stolen. Huggins bringing it down the court fast. Murphy on the defense, it won't work. And two for the Vaqueros, and they're on a little 
little scoring run. We'll be right back after this timeout to discuss what just happened. I decided to go to college to further my education and to find my purpose in the world and be a part of something much bigger than myself. I wanted to set up the best possible future for myself, both academically and athletically. I try to learn from everyone, whether that be professors, my teammates, or other student athletes. I try to see everyone as an opportunity to learn. Everyone has a story to tell, and I think there's a moral and something you can learn from it. Welcome back here inside GCU Arena. Lopes lead by 12, but a little run there by UTRGV making four of their last four shots. Yeah, our uh, shooting percentage, our field goal has gone down a little bit, uh, but I think that's just because more pressure on D, you know. Uh, we are shooting 56% now, and they are at 34%. Much better shooting for UTRGV, 34%. They were shooting 17% through that first quarter, so they're getting it going a little bit, making four of their last four shots. As I said, Lopes lead by 12. Got to keep the defensive pressure up. Yeah, maybe they just got to warm up a little, you know? Warming up, Lopes warming up, UTRGV warming up. We saw, I saw Van Tilburg over there stretching her knee out, took off her face mask and her knee brace. Hopefully that's, hopefully that's not depictive of what's going on with her health right now. Hopefully we can see her back again later. One of the leading scorers for the Vaqueros. Jessica Gajewski defended by Megan Johnson. Screen and roll and a floater by Gajewski. Beautiful touch for the two. Megan Johnson defended by Myra Williams. Hard defense by Williams. Charged with the push. First foul on Williams. Our, our coach is definitely disagreeing with that call. Yeah, Nicole Powell not happy about that one. Wanted to travel. Hyman over the ball. Shot it to the feet of Sampson. Augusta Shard kind of elbowed off. It's one thing about passing it down to centers or taller players. You got to get it up high. Can't get those bounce passes down low. I'm sure, Sampson wasn't happy with that one below her knees. And a great layup by Jamika Dowell. Full court press up coming for the Vaqueros. August Tichard. She'll be able to break that. Nice little screen right there. Kajewski back out to Tichard. Lopes still leading by 12. Halfway through this second quarter, almost a half done. Kajewski bouncing off the screen. One on the shot clock, just had to fire up kind of a sideways right-handed shot. And it almost made it. Not very high percentage for the Lopes. I'm sure Powell's not happy about that offense. Talking to the referee right now. Megan Johnson. A shot by Sampson, will not go in, but an offensive rebound. Gets the rebound to her own shot. She couldn't finish it. August to Shard. Murphy's actually leading with points right now. Got nine on the board and five rebounds. Murphy having a very solid game. Gets it to her now. Murphy coming in for the screen to Akula. Akula bounces off that dribble. Kajewski, three on the shot clock. Murphy for three at the buzzer. Oh, just off. And rebounded by Johnson. No points for the Lopes in the last two minutes. What I like about Murphy too is not only can she score down low, but she's not afraid to shoot. And an offensive foul against Jamika Dowell. Started driving through a little elbow, right at Tashard. 
Tishard took a couple steps back, did a good job selling it. She draws the offensive foul right there. You see the elbow pushed right in under her arm. She'll get the offensive foul. She's coming right back at Dowell. Set the screen for Gajewski. Tishard back to Gajewski. And Dowell steals it. Great job predicting that dribble handoff. Huggins bringing it back down, a little floater, a little strong off the glass. Rebounded by Sampson, put up and in. Vaqueros trail by 10. They also have a pretty big fan base tonight here. A lot of parents right behind the bench. Holding up some bright orange signs. Getting excited on this little run UTRGV's on. Playing good defense against the Lopes. Dude, they're definitely good at reading, reading our plays. Off the ball foul, that's the sixth team foul against UTRGV. Lopes are at the line, shooting two through the, already in the double bonus here in this second quarter. Two and a half minutes left. I love when Kajuski goes up there. Kajuski's she got the muscle memory tire. down. Shooting at 92%. We got Jordan Jackson being subbed in for Kavito Kula. She misses the second, you jinxed her. I did jinx her, I've been jinxing at everyone tonight. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I should just stop. Hyman brings the ball back down. She's gonna shoot a three and she'll get it to go. Can't give her any space whatsoever. She gets on the board for the first time of the night. Bringing the Vaqueros back in with an eight. August Tashard, a lot of off the ball movement. Jordan Jackson coming in for the Lopes here. And August Tashard will take it to the rack and get fouled. And she'll go to the charity stripe. Shard hits the rim several times there, rattled in, rattled out, and eventually falls. That one had me sweating. Woo. That was a close one. She swishes this one much easier the than the first. Hyman, double teamed almost. Shard waves her off. Myra Williams on her now. Jessica Gajewski came over, great help, but Hyman fires a bullet that finds the bottom of the basket. <laughs> that ball had no arc on it either. It yeah. just straight in. Tashard, very high pressure by Dowell. Dowell doing a great job. That's one thing you can't do, let the Lopes do, is have space. Can't give Tashard space to run the offense, and Dowell's not letting that happen. Kavita Kula fired up a low percentage three, and the Lopes have zero points in the last four minutes. Oh, another three for the Vaqueros, almost fell. Vanessa Murphy gonna take the dribble. August to Shard, jumping off. Lopes gotta get up the court. They do, one second to spare. Shard back out to Gajewski. Gajewski step back three, does not fall. Vanessa Murphy gets the offensive rebound, trying to get it to Kavita Kula. She'll save it, one minute remaining here in the second quarter. 20 on the shot clock for the Lopes. Tashard slowing it down. Powell calling a play. Lopes need a solid offensive possession here before halftime. Gone four minutes and 40 seconds without a point. You can see Dow reaching. Gajewski, Gajewski a little runner, and she gets one in for the Lopes. They get their lead back to double digits. Dow's really bringing the pressure on. Huggins drops it off to Megan Johnson. Chance, fans chanting for a turnover. Dowell, nice little crossover. Three pointer, gone up and a foul. Huggins will go to the line for three free throws. Bad foul by Jessica Gajewski. They're gonna try to make this a one point lead again. Or a single digit lead, my bad. Vanessa Murphy going down for the rebounds.
Huggins misses the third. <laughs> Everyone yelling. And we're back Huggins to make the second of three. Back to single digit lead. Well, it's final in GCU Softball Stadium. Lopes get their first win of the season against Montana. Of course, it's a double header tonight. They start another game almost immediately. And GCU Volleyball winning in their fourth set, winning 18 to 12 right now. Need that fourth set to force a fifth one. And our men's basketball team up by one with 10 minutes left against UTRGV at UTRGV. I love when we play the same teams. Yeah, basketball, of course, women's and men's is always opposite wherever they are. It reminds me of They're a playing that same team school. on the road or at home. Yep, just like high school. Two, one, to Shard at the buzzer. This one falls short and a foul called. What a brutal mistake by the Vaqueros, and they know it. And it was a three-pointer, so three free throws coming up for August Deschard, and .4 seconds on the shot clock. As long as she takes her time. We'll be good to go. Vaquero's coach having a word with one of the, with the referee that made the foul call. Yeah, he's very upset. Not happy. They're gonna have .4 left on the shot clock, or on the game clock when they get the ball back. Tashard's gonna try to make three of these free throws. I believe the referee is reviewing whether it's two or three free throws, and it is three for August Tashard. Misses the first, just rattles out. Oh, second Ch one's good. Chichard nails the second one. Cheerleaders do a little flip. Chichard makes the third. No way you can get that shot off. She fires it anyways. Well short. Lopes lead by nine. Going into the locker room at half. We'll be right back for the Lopes halftime show. Hey you, are you ready? Grab your pack, grab your tent, grab your gear. Jump in. We're going on an adventure. In Arizona, there's so much to see, so much to experience. At GCU, adventure is never too far away. Offering over 200 academic programs with a Christian worldview and nestled in the heart of Phoenix, you can earn your degree in fewer than four years and explore everything Arizona has to offer. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash azroadtrip. My name is Anthony Perez and I earned my master's in education at Grand Canyon University. I feel that the degree program at GCU definitely got me ready and prepared me to be an agent of change so that way I can lead my classroom to find innovative ways Ways of solving the problems in education in the state of Arizona. Grand Canyon University definitely has a vibrant campus that has many resources that are accessible. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back here inside Antelope Gymnasium. Lopes lead 35 to 26. Great first half for Vanessa Murphy. Oh, she is doing tremendous. I couldn't ask for a better game. Anything down low? It's like magic, she's just making them all. Jessica Gajewski leads the Lopes with 10 points. And, and seven Huggins rebounds. and Hyman lead the way for the Vaqueros with five apiece. Well, GCU TV has a new talent position. Dominic has taken that role, and here is his first halftime Lopes report. Thanks guys, I'm Dominic Hinton here for your Lopes halftime report. There's been a lot going on in the world of NCAA basketball recently. Our men's team has won two in a row, beating UMKC 79-62 and Chicago State 89-55. Both of these wins come after a big loss to Utah Valley on the 27th. The Lopes are currently in second place in the WAC and now 6-2 in conference play. They look to extend their winning streak to three as they travel to UTRGV today. You can catch that game on the WAC Digital Network at 6 p.m. 
Continuing on in basketball news, the women's team won their Saturday afternoon conference game in Chicago by a score of 59 to 43. They are now 5-3 and three in conference play. The Lopes look to continue their strong season by pushing forward to the home stretch. GCU sits in fourth place in the WAC behind New Mexico State, CSU Bakersfield, and Seattle University. The basketball continues in full force. Men's volleyball has gotten into the swing of their season. Ranked 10th in the nation, the GCU Lopes are riding a comfortable four-game win streak. They look to continue their success on Saturday against the number two ranked UCLA. Don't miss out on one of the most exciting sports teams on campus. Game time is at 6 p.m. on GCU TV. As spring approaches, more sports are coming your way. Softball kicked off their season today, and we caught up with head coach Ann Pearson to see what she had to say about her roster and the upcoming season. Let's take a look. Well, it's great because we obviously we have Bobo back, and she had a she had a great summer touring with the Canadian national team as well as the Canadian junior team. And Mariah is going to be healthy this year, so we're going to have one senior, one sophomore pitcher, but two returning leading pitchers on our staff. We used all three of them last year, and and obviously we're missing Taylor Nolan, but I think Lexi and Yessi coming in, they're just going to give us more depth and they're very different from each other so it's going to give us a variety coming in not only as starters but also coming in off the bench. The big key for us is Mariah being healthy. She had a great year last year up until kind of her last weekend against Seattle when she just she couldn't go anymore because of her injury but you know we expect a lot out of Bo coming in. All of the returners I feel like they're going to have, whether they're starting or coming off the bench, I think they, they, now that they've been through the program at least one year, they understand the level of expectation and, and what's at stake now that we're postseason eligible. So, you know, I, we know the Twins are going to go out and be great because they are. Bianca's going to come out. I think Bianca's going to have a great senior year at first base. You know, and then, of course, the two senior catchers. Lainey Gomez in, uh, in center field, she's going to anchor that down. And, and I think as long as she just goes out and plays like Laney and doesn't press and try and put the team on her back, I think she's going to have another great season, too. And that's where we want to be. We want to be in those games. We want to have that opportunity. And in order to do that, it helps us to go against these tough opponents. When we get into a situation of being on a big stage, we've already been there. We've already faced the UCLA's, the Arizona's, the Utah's. Um, so we're not we're not going to be intimidated by it when it comes down to a postseason chance, you know, and it's just going to get us better. We learn, and it's nice profile games, not only for our program, but for the university as well. We did our goals the other day, and, you know, we talked about RPI, and, and we talked about our, our non-conference schedule, and we obviously know it's tough, but it's not only going to make us better, it's going to hopefully set us up for a postseason opportunity. We want to win the conference, and then we want to win the conference tournament so we can get into postseason because, as we know, as soon as we get into postseason, the season starts all over again, and everything is open. So those are our goals right there. We, we want to get into regionals and then, uh, and then see how deep we can go into the postseason. Looks like the Lopes have a great season ahead. Thanks for tuning in to the Lopes Halftime Report. For GCU TV, I'm Dominic Hinton. Back to you guys. Welcome back. Should be an exciting softball season, and hopefully it's a historic one. Oh, definitely. Got to, you know, break in the new uh, stadium with a, with a bang. Yep, softball, baseball, both with brand new stadiums. Should be a very exciting season for all of them. Got a lot of newcomers, but got a lot of returners. So and everyone's healthy. Yep. So it's going to be an gonna awesome be year moment. for softball and baseball in our new facilities. All part of that GCU 10 and 2 project. It's going to be a great year for GCU Lope Sports. Well, the latest GCU TV original series is here to answer your guys' questions. Here's the latest version of Ask GCU. Hi, I'm Julian Oliver, and this is Ask GCU. So today's tweet is, hashtag Ask GCU, is there a best place, <laughs> is, there <laughs> is there a good place to take a nap on Better. campus? That, <laughs> who's taking the nap? I can't. Is it one of the cool chairs? So me and the crew are here outside of, <laughs> <laughs> are you not the crew? <laughs> In my opinion, this is the best place to take a nap. Oh, <laughs> oh there we go. This makes a lot of sense now. Interesting. It's pretty quiet. <laughs> oh, yay. So comfy. Oh, these are good. These are nice. Yeah, these are really comfy. It's a two-seater. Two, two, two <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, I can't do it. So there you have it. <laughs> I can't do the turn. We went to Thunderground in front of Kaibab, the library. We've been to so many different areas. But in my opinion, I think that Thunderground makes the win as the number one because of how quiet and dim it is. Use the hashtag AskGCU to answer, to answer, we answer, <laughs> to, to ask your question. <laughs> This is my worst. The intro and the outro are my worst. Tweet hashtag AskGCU to get your question featured. Welcome back. If you have any questions about GCU, you can tweet it at hashtag AskGCU. Definitely an exciting little series that the Lopes have going on. It's true. It's all helpful things. I, like, who wouldn't want to know? Like, where would you nap, JP? Let's be honest. Yeah, come on. You love how would, napping. How would I answer some of the important questions I have about GCU? Well, we'll be right back after another short break to wrap up this halftime show. Well, it's great because we obviously we have Bobo back, and she had a she had a great summer touring with the Canadian national team as well as the Canadian junior team. And Mariah is going to be healthy this year, so we're going to have one senior, one sophomore pitcher, but two returning leading pitchers on our staff. We used all three of them last year, and and obviously we're missing Taylor Nolan, but I think Lexi and Yessi coming in, they're just going to give us more depth and they're very different from each other so it's going to give us a variety coming in not only as starters but also coming in off the bench the big key for us is mariah being healthy she had a great year last year up until kind of her last weekend against seattle when she just she couldn't go anymore because of her injury but you know we expect a lot out of Bo coming in all of the returners i feel like they're going to have, whether they're starting or coming off the bench, I think they, they, now that they've been through the program at least one year, they understand the level of expectation and, and what's at stake now that we're postseason eligible. So, you know, I, we know the Twins are going to go out and be great because they are. Bianca's going to come out. I think Bianca's going to have a great senior year at first base. You know, and then, of course, the two senior catchers. Lainey Gomez in, uh, in center field, she's going to anchor that down. And, and I think as long as she just goes out and plays like Laney and doesn't press and try and put the team on her back, I think she's going to have another great season too. That's where we want to be. We want to be in those games. We want to have that opportunity. And in order to do that, it helps us to go against these tough opponents. When we get into a situation of being on a big stage, we've already been there. We've already faced the UCLA's, the Arizona's, the Utah's. Um, so we're not we're not going to be intimidated by it when it comes down to a postseason chance, you know, and it's just going to get us better. We learn, and it's nice profile games, not only for our program, but for the university as well. We did our goals the other day, and, you know, we talked about RPI, and, and we talked about our, our non-conference schedule, and we obviously know it's tough, but it's not only going to make us better, it's going to hopefully set us up for a postseason opportunity. We want to win the conference, and then we want to win the conference tournament so we can get into postseason, because as we know, as soon as we get into postseason, the season starts all over again, and everything is open. So those are our goals right there. We, we want to get into regionals and then, uh, and then see how deep we can go into the postseason. Lopes lead by nine, Jessica Gajewski leading the way with 10, wrapping up this halftime show, approaching that second half. Adriana, what are some keys to the second half to ensure the Lopes get this victory? Definitely have to stop turning the ball over and start making the other team turn the ball over. I think our passes aren't too good right now. We're like rushing them, and I think it's because the defensive pressure is so high. So if we just watch out for those passes, because they're reading us really well, so. Lopes shooting 48%, UTRGV shooting 42%. The teams are coming back onto the court. One more break and we will get you ready for that second half of UTRGV versus GCU women's basketball. I'm Bianca, I'm a sophomore here at GCU and I'm studying mechanical engineering. Arizona is completely different from Italy, but that's why I love it so much. I feel honored to be here at GCU. I feel like they truly care about who I am. GCU is a fast expanding school and I love that this school includes diversity into it. I just feel like I found a new home here in a different country. The engineering program is not easy. 
they take in-class lectures and material, and then they allow you to apply hands-on activity and laboratories and experiments, I will be able to apply my knowledge and make a difference immediately. If you're passionate and if you work hard, you can do it, and GCU is here to support you. I can be whoever I want because I know that here I am welcome and I am accepted. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Hi, everybody. Hi, guys. Hi, I'm Tatum. Recently, there's been a lot going on, so today is going to be an exciting day. I just woke up. I'm going to class. And my classes are actually really going good this semester. So I just got done with the Thunder Vision meeting. And yesterday, I went out to dinner with my friends. I joined an Ultimate Frisbee team. I'm actually going to show you how to cook. Today is the fashionably pink fashion show. We are going to go to a Zumba class. I went to the Panic at the Disco concert. I wanted to talk to you about um, chapel service. We are going out to lunch for my birthday. I had so much fun just being able to represent GCU. I am so excited to be able to be a part of something like this. It's hard. College can be scary, but I definitely think it's worth it. So I will take you guys along with me and I'll see you next time. So see ya. I'll see you later. Bye. Well, Lopes lead by nine. Very close game here. Just warming up for this second half. Let's take a look at some action from around GCU. Lopes men's basketball is actually on the road. They're up by one with just three minutes left. That one's a nail biter. Close game for the Lopes men's basketball team. They will be back here next week. Women's basketball stays here this Saturday. They are a huge game against New Mexico State. The Lopes are in fourth in the WAC, five and three yeah, in the WAC in fourth place. Three games left at home, and uh, I definitely think uh, we can beat New Mexico. New Mexico so. State, not the best team on the road. UTRGV took them to overtime. So the Lopes match up pretty well with New Mexico State. Played them the first time on the road, didn't get the victory. Only two and a half games back from that first spot in the WAC conference standing. So very exciting things for GCU women's basketball. Approaching that WAC tournament, first time we're eligible for the postseason. I think we got it. Yeah, it'll be an exciting WAC tournament in Vegas come March Madness time. Very exciting. Women's softball, they won their first home opener. Doubleheader tonight, so you can also catch the end of that softball game once this one wraps up here very exciting just for the, all the programs here on gcu so far yeah everything is coming together so well all shout out to uh b mueller brian mueller <laughs> coming in clutch our president here at grand Can canyon university and the men's volleyball team down two sets to zero against pepperdine right now came back in that fifth set right now jumped out to an early three nothing lead of course, the fifth set's only played to 15, so that one's gonna come down to the wire pretty soon. Ooh, that's a good one. So we are getting ready for this second half here. UTRGV shooting 42% coming into this second half. Now, statistically, the Lopes are a better second half team, scoring more points than UTRGV, but defensively allowing more points UTRGV is than the Lopes. So it's pretty even second half about to start. 35 to 26, a defensive battle we have on our hands. And they're pretty consistent all around as a team. Like all their players are about averaging the same amount of points. So you can't just select one person and be like, oh, well, we need to cut off, you know. Yeah, this very girl. balanced scoring for UTRGV. 26 points. Let's throw it back to the court for this second half play. Jessica Kajewski inbounds it to August to shard. And an early foul. Not sure what happened. Maybe a clock error. I don't know if it was an early foul or not. But nonetheless, we get this second half going, and now an early foul. Two quick fouls picked up for the Vaqueros. And Dowell going to just substitute in right away. Juski will start off with the ball. Inbounds it to Tashard. Fresh shot clock for the Lopes, 30 seconds. Screen by Mobley, she'll get it up top. Mobley looking to drive, cut off. Juski 
I'm surprised we haven't seen more of Mobley this game. Mobley's only taken four shots, hit two of them. One of those being a three. Over to Akula. Akula a three. That one misses. Rebound goes well over Vanessa Murphy's head. She's unable to get it. To Shard. Playing solid defense. Gets in the face of Johnson. But a great rebound by Huggins. She's having herself quite the game. Five points, three rebounds. She's going to pick up another rebound there and go to the line for an opportunity for two more points. First one, no good. Fans are going to take credit for that one. They were yelling at the top of their lungs, had a little chant going. And Jordan Jackson going to check back in for the Lopes. For Bree Mobley. Oh, 0 for 2. And another foul. Jackson just checked in, and she's going to foul. Huggins will go back to the line, 4-2. Missed both of the first two there. I'm sure she wants a little redemption here. Yeah, she can't go for 4. Huggins 1 for 5 from the line here tonight. She's been living at that line. She can't seem to buy it. One for six. Ooh, and she makes it. Redemption. To Shard. Telling to push down the court. Ooh, almost broke the ankles of Dowell. Dowell almost fell over. This one out to Jordan Jackson. Jackson, a solid dribbler, very fundamentally sound. To Shard, working on Dowell. Here's Jackson now, crossover. Seven on the shot clock, over to Gajewski. She has some space for three, just short. Vanessa Murphy gets the rebound, though, and we're staying here. She's the re rebound queen right now. Vanessa Murphy doing a great job on the glass. Picking up her eighth of the game. Jackson with that shot and a foul. Jordan Jackson will go to the line, shooting two. Jordan Jackson only taking 26 free throws. Usually at 69%, so odds are in her favor. Made 18 of them. It's about to be 20, watch. Jordan Jackson a little off center, goes to the left, dribbles it on the W right on the WAC logo. Some players do that. Some like to off-center themselves, shooting free throws. Jordan Jackson misses the first, makes the second, rocking oh. that purple headband. I'll take it. And Huggins quickly brings it back up the court. Sampson drops it off for Megan Johnson. This one down low. Yep, that's Huggins. Huggins doing a great job down low. Really dominating yeah, the court for the Vaqueros. It's only a seven point game right now, so it's honestly anybody's game still. Folks have only scored one point in the last six minutes going, or seven minutes going back to that first half. This one gonna stay here. Referee says black ball. And McCray is gonna sub in. Jamaica Dowell checking out. Carols are going to have to work hard to keep that high defensive pressure up. Tashard was going up, wanted a foul, thought she got hit on the hand. Sampson dribbling it back in quick, and she'll get the layup up and in. And the Vaqueros are within five. They are on fire the second half. Carols are playing very well here in this third quarter. Went up to Jordan jo Jackson for three, misses it. Murphy with another offensive rebound. She's working it in a foul. Sampson getting a little too physical with the body there. She did not want to let that ball go. Ball right into 
Jordan Jackson, trade to Kavita Akula. August Tashard up to Jordan Jackson, right around the logo. Jordan Jackson handling the ball quite a bit while she's in. Turns it over there, but looking very confident. Yeah, confidence is definitely key. Although uh, that was a bad pass. Michelle Hyman. Just a little miscommunication. Dribbling it up over to Johnson. Both teams run a very high screen and roll offense and Johnson gets to the paint, gets it up and in and draws the foul. The Vaqueros down by three. Johnson going to the line to shoot one. This is the closest it's been all game. Cole Powell probably thinking to herself, I might need to call a timeout here. Lopes have only scored one point in the last eight minutes. That was off a free throw. They make that free throw. They wanted to, Nicole Powell not happy. They wanted a sub to check in. Kavita Kula over to Shard. Kula, plenty of space in the corner. Boom, puts home a three. Gets the Lopes a much needed bucket. Finally broke our streak of not scoring. Love Great it. job for the Lopes. Huggins, hard layup coming in. Sampson crashes in for the rebound. It'll be a baseline inbound foul against the Lopes. Myra Williams subbing in for Jordan Jackson. Saw Myra Williams a little bit in the first half. Jessica Juski trying to come in, almost gets a steal. Gets her hand on it. Megan Johnson, a little drive, stops and pops. Misses and a great rebound by Huggins. Gets the Vaqueros back within three, back and forth. We go. Lopes need to build a little rhythm. String a couple buckets together. And another not so good pass. Myra Williams tried to get that skip pass in the corner to Kavita, but it went over her head. She's gonna get benched for that move. Haley checking in for Williams. She knew she was out for that one, too. Nicole Powell shaking her head. And a foul. The Carrolls will go to the line for two. Great job by Sampson. Getting physical down low. Very strong with the ball. Nicole Powell looking stressed. First one, no good. Chrissy Sampson, 80% free throw shooter, misses the first. She knocks home the second. No press for the Vaqueros here early in the second half. Maybe they thought, let's press, get this game close, and then let's beat them on a half court defense. Well, it's working what they're doing now. Switch to his zone. August Tashard, three at the top. Misses. Lopes clinging on to a narrow two point lead. Hyman looking for Sampson down low. Guarded by Deshard, much smaller than her. And she'll get the two mismatch for the Lopes there. Goes to the advantage of UTRGV. They have a two point lead. Actually, we're tied, JP. <laughs> oh, score operator did a little different. I looked down, it says 41 39. I Look back up 39-39, tied here in the third quarter. We'll be right back after this timeout. GCU's College of Science, Engineering, and Technology offers a premier STEM education with relevant curricula designed to lead you to a career in the competitive fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. GCU is investing in the future of our STEM programs with multiple state-of-the-art facilities, providing students with access to cutting-edge technology. Our STEM education is motivated by a Christian worldview, which cultivates ethical decision-making. 
The College of Science, Engineering and Technology fosters traits in adaptability, collaboration, creativity, as well as ethical and social awareness, which makes our graduates from our STEM programs more competitive. Through robust collaboration and partnership with industries that require a STEM-prepared workforce, our faculty concentrates exclusively on student success within a deeply nurturing Christian setting. Find out more at gcu.edu slash CSET. Welcome back here inside GCU Arena. Tie ball game. Lopes let their, li let their lead slip away a little bit. Yeah, we didn't score for, what, eight minutes? And the UTRGV took advantage of that and was on fire, kept scoring. Eight to nine minutes of scoreless basketball for GCU dating back to the first half. Lopes need to work the ball around a little bit more like they were doing so effectively in that first half. Yeah, do you think they got a little too too confident with their... their Maybe got a little comfortable, jumped out to a hot lead. I think they were up 19 to four at one point, up by 15. Maybe they got a little confident, yeah. but they were kind of lackadaisical. But Nicole Powell is going to give them a piece of her mind and yell at them and get them going and maybe fire them up. Yeah, this is the first time they actually have a higher field goal percentage. They're shooting at 55% and uh, we're only at 20%. There's been zero lead changes and one time the score's been tied besides 0-0 and it is right now you are in for a good finish, a little scramble for the ball and the referee's going to call a jump ball, possession arrow towards the Vaqueros. Nice little stop and pop by Huggins. Little one-handed shot from the free throw line. Does not fall, but a very good offensive possession for UTRGV. Rebound tipped out of bounds and it'll be Lopes ball. Nice little pass to Bree Mobley. Bree Mobley. Getting a screen from Murphy. Oh, beats her. What a drive and dribble. Oh, just doesn't roll over the rim. But a great move by Bree Mobley. Yeah, she definitely had that lane wide open. A great three screen. by Johnson. Just misses. She'll get her own rebound and fouled by Bree Mobley. Mobley not happy about it. Thought maybe she was just playing some kind of physical basketball and going for the rebound, but got a little physical. A little more than the ref would have liked. She'll shoot for two. First one is good to go. Lopes will lose their lead 40 to 39 for UTRGV. Lopes started this half with no points in the last eight minutes and they're back on another scoring drought. Zero points in the last two and a half minutes for GCU. They trail by two. Look, it's uh, 41 to 39 now. <laughs> Kavita Kula down to Gajewski, ball movement, moving around the horn. Murphy had some space. Tashard working it back towards the right side. And a three by Jessica Gajewski, much needed bucket for the Lopes. It's a great assist by Kula. Kula gave her plenty of space, plenty of time. And a charge against UTRGV. Great job by Jessica Gajewski. Two plays in a row for her. Hits the three, takes the charge. That's one of those momentum builders that the Lopes kind of need. Gajewski back at the ball, right to Shard. Kajewski gets to the baseline, was looking right in the center for Murphy, doesn't find her. Hyman McCray with the ball in the corner. 20 seconds on the shot clock, turnover. Lopes get the ball back. Tashard pushing up the court. Over to Kajewski, pull up three, just misses right. 
We had the perfect line on that one, and we saw it right up her hand. Just missed that one a little right, maybe a little off balance. Forced on the fast break. Hyman back on this side, dribbling, using some clock. Over to Johnson. Almost another turnover. And a block against Jessica Kajewski. Megan Johnson will go to the line for two. Kajewski's second personal foul for the game. The Vaqueros will sub in four new players. Four substitutions coming in for UTRGV. And an update on Laura Van Tilburg. She's got some ice on her knee. I'm sure they're going to reevaluate later what exactly happened, see if there's any structural damage. But she will not be coming back into this game. Amar Graham coming in for the shooter, so a platoon swap for UTRGV. Sharon Miller coming in for Vanessa Murphy. Murphy having a monster game, nine points, nine rebounds. Sharon Miller's gonna need to come in and step up her game to keep that high level of play going. Kajewski over to Shard. Shard looking up, looking at the basket. Haley had some space in the corner. To Shard up top. To Shard puts a three. She puts it in. Fire the three-point error arrow to Shard. Puts the lopes up by two. Beautiful play, beautiful pass by Haley. And the lopes lead by two. Fans are on their feet. She definitely needed that shot. Maybe we'll get a little confidence booster. Tapia up to Graham. Graham getting in the paint, defended by Sharon Miller. And a foul against Miller. Marie Fatou Gaye will go to the line for the Vaqueros, hoping to tie this game back up again. It's been one of those games where we go to the line a lot. First. First shot is made. And second shot is good. Knocks down both. We are all locked up at 45 apiece. Both teams in the double bonus here. Just a minute and a half in this third quarter. Boy, has how has this game flown? Jessica Gajewski dribble handoff. August Shard. Good screen by Sharon Miller. Oh, Gajewski's got all the time in the world. Just misses the three, just short. Legs getting a little tired here late. Gonna have to fight through the pain. And a great drive by Turk. Puts up the right-handed floater, does not go. And Gaye with a great rebound. She's able to finish it. Lopes need to box her out. UTRGV is up again. With we've seen some of the past games Miller's had such a strong impact down low. She needs to figure out a way to box out Gaye. To Shard. This one out with Haley. Three on the clock. Fires up a three. She'll miss. We have 30 seconds. And a hard foul. Late whistle, I thought the ref was almost gonna let him go on that one, but definitely a hard foul against the Lopes. Double bonus, immediately going to the line. Vaqueros lead by two, 29 seconds on the shot clock, or on the game clock, no shot clock remaining. I'm sure the Lopes might wanna wait for that last shot. First one is no good. Amara Graham doesn't get it to fall. She doesn't get the second. Great job by the Lopes fans, staying loud. Got a couple young groups in here. We're trying to run down the clock. August Deschard gets to the elbow. Out to Haley, turnover for the Lopes. 
And Gaye does not get there in time. Had a fast break all to herself. But we'll be back after this short timeout. Lopes trail by two heading into the fourth. On the field. In the pool. On the court. We wear our game faces under the lights. But sometimes our toughest opponents aren't wearing a uniform. Instead, we confront them internally. Mental illness affects one in four adults in the United States. And suicide is the second leading cause of death among college students. If you or someone you know is fighting a silent battle, please speak up and ask for help. You are not alone. Good sportsmanship isn't defined by a scoreboard. It isn't defined by how high you can jump or how fast you can run. Good sportsmanship is all about character. It is about doing your best for your coaches and teammates. It's about having respect for your opponents, the officials, and the fans. Good sportsmanship is winning with class and losing with dignity. It is fair play, perseverance, and team spirit. Good sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are the Western, Western Athletic Conference. Welcome back, Lopes trail by two. We are in the fourth quarter. It's crunch time for the Lopes. So this is definitely the time where we're gonna have to push and give it our all. So I gotta leave it all on the court. Leave it all on the court. Let's give you some updates on some other courts. Men's volleyball completed the comeback. Down two sets to zero. They win the next three sets to win inside Antelope Gymnasium here tonight. Of course, I told you earlier, softball won their first of the doubleheader. They are tied 0-0 in the top of the second inning on the second doubleheader. And men's basketball is in a barn burner at UTRGB, down by three with just seven seconds remaining in that game. And I'll give you the result of that one when that one goes final. But right now, the Lopes women's basketball team trails two. August to Shard, Kavita Kula, Jessica Gajewski, a lot of ball movement for the Lopes. Definitely key to opening up some shooters and getting some high quality shots. And Miller with a great spin move, gets the ball around the block, spins around her defender and puts it up for two. Tie game. That was a perfect play. Oh, but she left her man wide open. And one for the Vaqueros. Megan Johnson, a very nice bucket she just made there. We'll go to the line to put UTRGB up by three. She's been making all her free throws tonight. And another one. August to Shard on the far wing. Over to Akula. Akula has some time in the corner. Three ball for Kavita Akula. Ties it back up. Whatever UTRGV does, the Lopes have been able to respond. And a turnover for the Lopes. Oh, they had Camille Haley. To Shard finds her. She's got a one on one now. She's going to draw the foul and a charge against Haley. She slaps the floor, is not happy. That one right in front of her bench. And Powell waves off the referee, says, guys, let's keep playing, but a tough break for Camille Haley. She loved the effort. Loved the push, loved the drive, loved the energy. Hyman with the ball. Over to Johnson. Johnson just short. Very solid high percentage shot. Hyman all alone for three at the top. This one misses. Akula trying to sky up for the rebound, just tips it. She's going to run point now. Nope. Tashard will come get it. August Tashard over to Kavita Akula. A cutting, Jessica Gajewski gets the ball, moving to her right, puts it up, 
and Beautiful swishes it home. floater right there. Perfect shot by her and a great pass by Kavita Kula to find her. Very good play call for the Lopes. They take the lead back. And a great layup by Megan Johnson. The Lopes men's game just went final. Alessandra Laver had a layup at the buzzer, and he doesn't get it to fall. Lopes lose by two at UTRGV for the Lopes women's basketball, hoping to get the basketball program a W against UTRGV tonight. They are tied 52-52. Three ball by Akula, misses. Was coming back in for her rebound. Didn't follow her shot initially and then tried to. Almost got it. Hyman going to run some clock. Megan Johnson over to Sampson. Sampson puts home a three. You can count it. All three of those. The perfect amount of space right there. Easy money. August looking for the screen. Jessica Gajewski defended by Johnson. Sharon Miller coming in for the screen. Gajewski gets to the paint and a floater off the front, off the glass and in. Got the roll and the Lopes are down by one, need a defensive stop. Her flows are always so graceful. I love it. Great job by Jessica Gajewski having a monster game tonight. 17 points for her, shooting seven for 16 and a tough shot. Yeah, she had 20 points last game, so. Dowell misses that tough shot. Rebounded by Miller. Over to Akula. Jessica Gajewski up, off the back iron. Diving in for the ball. I think we're going to get a jump ball called here. Yep. <laughs> Jump ball, possession arrow on GCU. So Lopes retain it. Four subs coming in for the Vaqueros. Whenever we've seen them sub, they've come in numbers. They run deep. Quinn Huggins coming on the court. Tapia handling the offense. Dribbling the ball right around the U. That's what UTRGV is trying to do, is just put together solid offensive possessions. Amara Graham, back to Tapia. All the drives have been pretty solid. Looking to go down low, looking for McCray. And three in the key against UTRGV. Another turnover, their 14th of the game. Lopes only have six points off turnovers in this game, not executing well off of them. They need a bucket here, trail by one, midway point through the fourth quarter. Lopes three out offense. Little motion to break the zone. Akula three from the corner, misses. Gajewski tips it towards the center. No one was there. Myra Williams was towards the high post. And Tapia going to go in hard for a layup. Almost turned the ball over. Tapia gets it back, 15 on the clock. She takes a look up there. Graham, defended by Myra Williams. He's gonna try to beat her on the dribble. And Williams with a monster block. Myra Williams, that play is huge. That was beautiful. Graham thought she could beat her off the dribble. She couldn't, then she tried not to sky over her, and not today. Exactly. Kavita Kula. Down to Camille Haley. And that's exactly the kind of defensive pressure we're going to need in order to stop them from scoring. Kula, tough three-pointer. Kind of moving to our side and just fired that one up there. Not very high percentage. Not exactly what Nicole Powell wanted. Ideal Turk. 
Amerigram going down low to Alicia McCray. Oh, Tapia's wide open for three. She misses. Offensive rebound by the Vaqueros. Those are daggers for GCU. Play a very good defensive possession, and you let up an offensive rebound. Fresh shot clock for UTRGV. Graham getting to the paint. Up, misses. Camille Haley, rebound. I just tried looking at Nicole Powell to see what kind of play she wants to run. Jessica Gajewski. August Tashard for three. Boom, lopes up by two. Two minutes and 45 seconds. Tapia's bringing it down, but a great three-pointer by August Tashard. Timeout for the Vaqueros. Lopes lead by two. Let's wrap this fourth quarter up when we come back. I'm Mary. I am a sophomore at GCU, and I'm studying biomedical engineering. GCU is definitely preparing me for the next chapter in my life. Biomedical engineering is not easy. We are able to interact with the doctors and provide the tools they need to be successful. I want to be able to start my own company and create the crazy technologies that the doctors are using, and that way when I see them, like that's my product right there. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. I am Laura Lozoya, and I am majoring in biology with an emphasis in pre-med at Grand Canyon University. The dorm life at GCU definitely helped me build relationships, and I've made great friends on this campus. The quality education here is great. You're testing your limits, but you're going beyond them. It all comes together. The sciences, the ethics, and just everything. It's a beautiful thing. Grand Canyon University. The quality of a private Christian education. The affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back here inside GCU Arena. T-shirt time right now. Everyone excited for T-shirt time. That's everyone's favorite part of the game, don't you know? Everyone wants to get a free GCU <laughs> T-shirt. Paint the Valley purple is what they say. Can't do that without some free T-shirt. Lopes lead by two. Huge three by August Deschard. With two minutes left. You think we can get it? Two minutes, 42 seconds left. Lopes looking strong, shooting 44% to Shard with 13 points. Gajewski with 17. They are leading the way for GCU, doing a great job. They've been able to crack this zone that UTRGV is doing. They're getting open shots and they're making them. Yeah, we haven't been driving as much the second half. It's mainly we've been shooting more threes, so I definitely think that's impacted our game a bit. Yeah, Lopes doing a good job there. Also playing very solid defense, forcing some tough shots for UTRGV, making them work for it. Definitely. And they're not getting them, but the Lopes do need to rebound a little bit better, getting out-rebounded in this entire game. 38 to 18, that is a monstrous number. Getting out-rebounded by 20, definitely something the Lopes need to work on. And a charge against Alicia McCray. Just flung Jessica Gajewski down on the baseline. And a timeout for UTRGV. We'll take a quick 30 second timeout and be back. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Grand Canyon University would like to wish a happy birthday to former Lopes basketball player, Jerome Garrison. Coach Garrison is here tonight with this imagine girls basketball game. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big GCU happy birthday to Coach Jerome Garrison. Lopes lead by two, 57 to 55. Marching band playing a little tune for the fans to get excited here. We're shooting about average, both, uh, both teams 44% for the Lopes and 41.3% for UTRGV. Similar shots. 
20 for 45 for the Lopes, 19 for 46 for UTRGV, but the key for the Lopes is rebounding out, getting out rebounded 38 to 18, and especially on the offensive side, 15 to three, UTRGV's leading. Yeah, Tushard with 13 points and uh, six assists, so she's having a pretty good game herself. Jessica Gajewski inbounded to August Tushard. Tashard quickly beats the press, was holding off Dowell. Kavita Kula. Great movement by the Lopes, just switching some matchups. Haley right around the free throw line, looking for, looking for an outlet. Lopes going small. Myra Williams, their tallest player on the court. Camille Haley, the next one. Kajewski, little step back jumper, puts it home. Ice in her veins, Kajewski, great shot. I like it. Jessica Gajewski, step back jumper, puts the Lopes up by four with two minutes left. Myra Williams on Megan Johnson. Johnson, the leading scorer for UTRGV, has had a big second half. She's got 14 here tonight. And a turnover by the Lopes. Camille Haley guessed it, read her like a book, was picked it off on the run. Yeah, Camille Haley's been a very good help the second half with a uh, turnovers. Lopes have a seven nothing run over the last four and a half minutes. Outstanding job for GCU now over the last five minutes. No points for UTRGV in the last five and a half minutes. Lopes doing a great job defensively late in this game. Turk is going to sub in for Dow this half and Mobley for Akula. Neither team is in foul trouble. Free throws shouldn't be a factor. A couple fouls to give for each. Jessica Gajewski defended by Johnson. Gajewski fighting her off. Tashard's going to be open for three. Oh, this one in and out. Lopes could have used that. That one might have iced the deal. They're going to have to sweat this one out, playing defense. Johnson wide open. Tashard gets there quick. A three by Turk. We'll be right back after this. Our armed forces' heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. I'm Christian Taylor. Back here inside GCU Arena, a huge three by Ideal Turk. She just checked in and knocks it home. 51.1 seconds left on the clock, and we're only up by one. Yeah, great game coming down to the wire. The men's game came down to the wire at UTRGV. Women's game following suit. Lopes trail by, or Lopes lead by one, and they'll have the ball coming back down the court. What do you what do you suggest we do? August Tashard's gonna be the one with the ball in her hand. She's gonna make the play. Lopes all about ball movement, and they need to run the clock, because whether or not they get a shot or not, Got to use that whole shot clock. Only 50 seconds left. You want to control your own destiny and take a solid possession. I'm sure Nicole Powell liked that timeout by the Vaqueros. They were able to draw up exactly the play they wanted. It's going to work out perfectly for GCU. Now let's send it back to the court for the finish of this game. Jessica Gajewski. Gets it to Deshard. to Bree Mobley. Mobley dribbling it right around the G, using the whole shot clock. Like I said, right about nine, seven on the shot clock. Now when they left her open, she's going to drive in, misses it, wanted a foul, thought she had the argument. She got hit on the body. 20 seconds now, UTRGV going to play for the last shot, I think. Bold move by them. 12 and a timeout. This one gonna be 30, referee taps the shoulders, just a 30 second timeout, so we won't go to break, we'll just talk through this one. 
12 seconds left. Lopes with a tough, tough possession. Not great. Not a great shot. Bree Mobley saw the Red Seas part for We kind of saw the perfect angle here. Looked like she had a wide open lane. Went down there, got hit on the body, but the ref didn't call it. So close. Yeah, UTR TV is definitely going to hold the ball the remaining 12 seconds. And yeah, try yeah, to go for a layup. Coach for UTR TV is going to drop a very good play. GCU's got one timeout. The referee just went over there and signaled one timeout for the Lopes. No timeouts for UTR GV. They got two team fouls. So fouls are not an issue for either team. UTR GV is going to try to win this one at the buzzer. Let's send it back onto the court. Ball goes into Huggins. Hyman's got it. Johnson with four. Three, Johnson gets to the paint, and a charge called. Huge for the Lopes. Johnson made the basket, wanted the foul, but does not get it. Lopes lead by one and will have possession. Timeout for Nicole Powell. We'll be right back after the short break. Grand Canyon University, Arizona's private Christian university, is a top tourism market bustling right in the heart of Phoenix. Join the student team at the GCU Hotel, Canyon 49 Grill, and Coffee Shop GCBC for real-world learning opportunities. Hospitality students can gain workplace skills and leadership training on the GCU Championship Golf Course featuring brand new amenities. Across every enterprise, you have the chance to network, learn, and grow. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Welcome back. 1.5 seconds, great defensive possession by the Lopes. We definitely needed that uh, foul right there. Charge, great job by Jessica Kajewski taking that one. I think it was Jessica Kajewski. Scrum, there's a scrum of Lopes down there. They figured it out, great job. 1.5 seconds, UTR is gonna try to foul, and they won't foul, kind of a shocking move. But the Lopes win by one. An electric atmosphere here inside GCU arena and everyone is happy on their feet the Lopes get the W at least the women won this game yeah the men's fell but GCU women gets the win Jessica Gajewski great game 19 points to shard follows it up with 13 you're gonna want to come back on Saturday here on GCU TV or you could come see it for yourself in GCU arena I believe Philip Katafamo has the call you'll be there for that one Huge game against New Mexico State. The women's basketball team's hoping to get another win and continue their rise up the WAC standings. For Adriana Esparza, I'm JP Sar. You can catch all your GCU TV sport or GCU sports right here on GCTV. Thank you for watching and go Lo.